talk about uh, using Mortensen math blocks to facilitate counting. Usually base 10 blocks uh, come in individual units like this and 10s like this and then hundreds like this. And that's usually all that you get in a base 10 block kit. Mortensen's uh, math blocks are unique in that they um, are different than this. They actually come in uh, unit bars that have been pushed together. Um, so let's just move the tens and the hundreds out of here and let's talk about the unit bars. So here's the units that you normally would get in a base 10 block kit. And then these are the unit bars that you will get in a Mortensen math block kit. Uh, I think I have them all there. <clears throat> um, and what makes these ones special is that although they are units just like this, they have um, been uh, pushed together so that they become one block. So here, if I was talking about one block, that's you know obvious. There's one, there's one. But if I'm talking about two, if I want them to build two, well, there's two, but here's two. It's it's um just pushed together. And we can see that they're same because they're same size. We can check like that. Um, that's kind of the control of error, which is nice. And if we pull this down like this, can you see the equal sign there? So that is, I'm going to move that up a little bit so that you can see it better. There's one, two, one, two. If we pull this down, there's an equal sign. So let's do that with the three bar as well. If we're, we want a, a three, which is next. One, two, three. Can you see how much easier it is just to grab a three bar than it is to go one, two, three? Now again, you can see the um, equal sign in there. And so basically with Mortensen Math, what they've done is they've molded these blocks so that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we can easily count from uh, one to nine using these uh, blocks that have the units pushed together. So instead of um, counting out, like if you asked a child to count out to nine with these, they'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you asked them to get a nine from here, they could just simply pull the nine out. So there's nine, there's nine. Um, it's kind of hard to see um, what nine looks like here because they're all kind of bunched together. Whereas here, it's really clear to see the length of nine compared to the other blocks. So there's eight. So you can see, like say if I asked them to get out eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I asked them which is bigger, eight or nine, would they be able to tell? It would be pretty hard for them to tell just by looking at that, that eight is smaller and nine is bigger. But if you get out an eight block here and a nine block here, it's really easy to tell that eight is smaller than nine. You could put them that way or you could put them this way, put them that way put them this way. It's really easy to see that 8 is smaller than 9 and 9 is bigger than 8. So <clears throat> we talk about um, making math simple and easy for kids and one of the things that we want to talk about is how much time it takes for them to work with problems and how much energy they have to put out. If they're having to take all these green unit bars and constantly count out one by one to a certain number, so maybe we want them to count to 9, yeah, or to find nine unit bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And maybe what maybe we're asking them to compare nine and eight, right? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It takes quite a bit of time and energy. And hopefully they've, you know, not made an error in there. Whereas with these blocks, it's really simple. Let's compare eight and nine. Well, there's nine. There's eight. Let's put them together and see. Oh yeah, nine is bigger than eight. Eight is smaller than nine. So it, we call that economy of motion. Um, less time, less energy um, being put out. Um, a lot more energy available and time available to actually work on the concept that you're working on. If you're asking them to compare eight and nine 
with these, not only do they have to count them out, not only do they have to count them out, then they have to try and line them up into a straight line. And then they have to <clears throat> compare them. Um, if they're learning about eight and nine, they might not know that nine is bigger. They might actually get these confused and think that's eight and that's nine. Uh, um, whereas here, if you've worked with a three period lesson at all, or even just counting, um, they will know that that's a nine <clears throat> and that's an eight. And also these cards are really great because if you ask them to get out a nine and an eight, you can, um, they're color coded so they can match the color to the symbol. Now you don't really need to do uh, symbols at the beginning when you're learning how to count. It's not really important to have the symbols out here at all. We can just talk about sizes, like this is one. We want to find two, and two is one bigger than one, one more than one. So can you see how that's one more than one? Well, let's find three, and that's going to be one bigger than two. Can you see how they can actually see that that's one bigger than two? What comes next? Well, four, and then five, and then six, and then seven, and then, oh, he's too bigger than seven. He can't come next. Nine is not next. Eight is next, right? Or maybe they pick out this one and they go, they think that that's, oh, he's, he's too short. He can't be next because the next one has to be one bigger. So, <clears throat> these blocks, these um, molded blocks that Mortensen Math, Jerry Mortensen, in fact, um, designed, really do facilitate counting with little kids, with older kids, with teenagers, with adults. Um, so now, the easy thing to do to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, can even count backwards, one, or sorry, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So just simple counting is what we're talking about today. Um, and also the difference between the regular base 10 kits, which you can see are a little bit more time consuming and energy consuming than the Mortensen math kits. So these are the ones that we wanna, we wanna start with. We wanna learn the digits from one to nine. <clears throat> if you can count from one to nine, you can do any math. Now, we also have, um, zero in here, uh, but we don't really count zero because if we have nothing here, nothing has a special kind of name and that is zero. So there's just nothing here. We do use that digit because that digit is part of um, the digits that we use to make up all the numbers that, we, that we're working with. Um, and we do have a way to build zero, which I will show in another video. Um, we can actually concretely build zero with the blocks. Um, however, for now, the basic concept is if there's nothing there, nothing has a special name, its name is zero. Um, we want to talk about one. Well, that's one. One is just one little green unit. How about two? Well, two is two units. I mean, we could do two green units. You know, if that's all you have, you can do that. But it's easier for them to pick up a two bar. And again, three. Well, three is three units. But again, easier to just pick up a three bar. So I hope that you can see the simplicity of using these bars to help your children count. Um, these are color coded uh, cards that I'm going to be making available uh, for download um, at a very minimal, minimal charge um, so that you can uh, use them uh, for uh, symbol to block correspondence. Um, Mortensen Math um, at this time doesn't sell anything uh, like this with their kits, so it's something that I will make available to you to use. Um, it, it helps with control of error because if they already know their symbols, um, then they can match the block to the symbol, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, perhaps they don't know their symbols, but maybe they know how to count. <clears throat> well, let's find out which symbol goes with three. What does three look like when we, when we write it as a symbol? Oh, well, there we go. That's what three looks like. How about seven? What does seven look like? Oh, that's what seven looks like when we write it as a symbol. Okay. 
um, we can show them and we can talk about colors too. Uh, you know, if they are working on learning their colors. You know what color is three? Well, three is pink, right? What color is five? Well, five's, five's light blue. What color is one? Well, one's green. So you can work on their colors as well. Um, I've kind of lost my train of thought for a moment here. Uh, let's just put these together for a moment and hopefully it'll come back to me. Ah, that's what I was thinking. You could also have a big pile of blocks like this, right? Now, I'm going to actually put this big pile of blocks over here. And I'm going to put, okay, hopefully you can see that. I'm going to put all of these unit blocks over here. Okay. And if I ask you to show me five. Now, they don't need to know those symbols in order to do this. But just suppose they know it. Can you show me five? Or you can verbally say, can you show me five? Well, with these, they're going to have to count them out. With these, they just grab a five. And there's a lot of learning going on here because you can clearly see that five is smaller than nine. You can clearly see that five is bigger than one. You know, with here, if I've got five and I've got four, which, which is bigger, five or four? In order to figure that out, we have to actually make them into this straight line and then compare them. Oh, but which one is five and which one's four? I can't remember. So we might, they might mistakenly say, well, four is, big, uh, four is bigger than five, thinking that this is, is four. So it's really, really, um, these blocks really facilitate so many different concepts when you're working with the little kids and the bigger kids and the teenagers and the adults. So these are the way to go in unit, using the push together unit bars. Again, economy of, of sim, of, uh, sorry, economy of block, which means economy of motion and energy, which means they're not spending a lot of energy and time, um, and it's economy of time as well, because you're not spending a lot of time and energy or, um, well, energy, motion, basically the same thing, um, trying to count out single blocks. You can just simply say, okay, we want to talk about maybe eight and nine. So, well, let's start smaller. We want to talk about four and five. We want to compare them to see which one's bigger. Maybe that's there and that's there. Or maybe we even want to put three in there. Which, which is bigger, five, four, or three? And you don't necessarily need these uh, symbols, like I said. Let's compare five, four, and three. Well, let's put them side by side and let's find out. Well, it's clear that five's the bigger of the lot and three's the smallest and four is somewhere in between. So you can have the symbols. They don't need the symbols, though, to be able to start counting and, and comparing and adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing or even doing uh, basic algebra and, and calc um, concepts. They don't need the symbols at the beginning. They All they need is the blocks. Now, I want to show you one other thing before I kind of shut this down. Um, if we're counting, one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine. Well, what comes after nine? Do we know? Well, with these blocks, it's actually kind of cool. And uh, the number that would come after nine, if you were using the symbols, is going to be 10. So we could build, do you see how I'm only using these digits to build the next number that we're gonna use? I just need a one and a zero. What happens with these blocks, and keep in mind again, right now we're just talking about units. If we add, if we have nine of, of a kind, and in this case it's the unit kind, and we add one more, we end up with one of the next biggest kind. So now we end up with a 10 kind. And the real cool thing is, if we end up with 10, 10, or nine tens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and get this one of the other things that is so awesome about this program is they also have not only do they have multi units they have multi tens so instead of counting out and I'll just bring my pile of multi tens here hopefully you can see them let's push these up a, a little bit instead of counting out I'm gonna move these out of the way 
instead of counting out nine single tens, I can just look at my pile of multi tens, pick out the nine tens. Can you see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tens in there? Just like over here, there's a certain amount of units in each block. Okay, so here there's nine tens. We'll just move all these tens out. You see there's five tens, six tens, seven tens, eight tens, two tens, three tens, four tens. Again, the colors all match, right? So if you're talking about one ten, I actually do have a green ten here. If you're talking about one ten, there's one ten. Can you see that's the ten kind? There's one ten. Oh, if I want five tens, well, there's five tens. So you can use these cards that I'm going to be making to also help um, with uh, control of error and everything. And you can see there's a five, five units, five tens. Okay. They do have multi hundreds too, but they don't actually make them anymore. I don't believe I do have a set, which I'll show in another video. But anyway, so here's nine. We add one more of that kind. So nine tens and we add one more 10 and we end up with the next biggest kind, which would be a hundred. Um, I don't have an, another zero here to to show you um, the hundred, but uh, it would be a one with two zeros after it. So these are really, really uh, cool blocks. I really enjoy them. I have a lot of fun playing with them. I know all the kids that I work with really enjoy playing with them. So, oh, and basically also, uh, if you're talking about counting, you can count tens, you know, one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, or you can count tens. There's one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, six tens, oh, six tens, seven tens, eight tens, nine tens. Hopefully you can see all that. And there's ten tens, which is, you know, nine tens plus one more ten gives you one of the next biggest kind. So these blocks really, really facilitate counting in so many different ways. And um, I hope that uh, if you haven't purchased them already, that you will purchase some. Um, and if you have purchased them, you will already know that these are um, beautiful, beautiful blocks to play with. If you haven't purchased them, I think you will be so excited when you open up your 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 kit and, and you get to play with these blocks. Now, before you even start with counting, you're going to just do um, uh, explore and discover by just, just playing. Just let the kids play and build things and have a good time. They will learn so many concepts on their own without you even telling them just by playing with the blocks and building things. And again, that's, that's something for another video. So I'm going to sign off there. I will be putting up more videos. I hope this um, is helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions about it, you can leave a comment um, below. Or you could email me. Um, you could look on the how to order page and my email is there under a link um, uh, to prevent uh, spammers from just spamming it. So. Um, but, you know, leave a comment if, you know, if, if you have something positive to say or something that you're not sure about or you just have questions, just leave a comment below and um, I'll respond back to you. Um, and if you haven't got these blocks already, hit me up. Order, order some for your kids because they are a fantastic tool to have in your home or school math program.